Early one Christmas morning, so early in fact it was still quite dark outside, young Thomas Hedling woke to the sound of a floorboard creaking on the second floor in the quiet house. Rubbing his eyes until the fog began to clear, he cupped his hands over his mouth so as not to let anyone hear. Excitement raced through him as he realized that surely the creak came from the boots of the one and only Santa Claus himself, delivering armloads of presents to him and his parents. There must be tons of presents because he had been a really good boy that year. He had to be. His parents promised that if he was a really good boy, they would let him go outside for the first time since he could remember. Alas, he hadn't covered his mouth quickly enough because the boots slowly approached his door, painfully slowly, and stopped right on the other side. Gently, the handle began to turn, making quiet squeaks as it moved. The boy's eyes grew wide with fear. You weren't supposed to see Santa, ever. He fell quickly to his pillow and pretended to be asleep. But of course, the great Mr. Claus always knew if you were sleeping or if you were awake. But poor Thomas didn't know what else to do. The door quietly opened and the room was splashed with dim light as in crept old Saint Nick. He walked to the bed and leaned down close to Thomas's ear. He whispered, I know you're awake, young Thomas, but you've been a really good boy this year, so I'll leave you with one present to play with now while I go bring your parents their special gift. Will you do that for me? Thomas nodded with glee as he sat up and began to open the box as Santa closed the door, heading down the hall to his parents' room. The gift was a simple box with a handle on the side, but surely there must be something hiding inside the box itself. He turned the crank and smiled at the plucking sounds it made, but no matter how much he turned it, nothing happened. He sighed, then with determination, he cranked over and over, faster and faster, until he couldn't turn the crank any longer. Just then, the screams began. His eyes went wide as he looked at the box. How could he have caused someone pain simply by turning the crank on a toy? Then he realized whose screams those were. It was his mother and father. He threw the box on the floor and the screams immediately stopped after one more long, blood-curdling effort. Thomas jumped out of bed and ran to his door, throwing it open. As he made his way to his parents' room, too late to see Santa leave, he stared at the corpses on the floor. There was blood everywhere, and his mind couldn't accept what he was seeing. He saw two bodies, presumably his parents, but he didn't recognize them. They had been hacked to pieces. He saw a knife on the floor and waded through the blood to pick it up. Twenty minutes later, the police arrived and found young Thomas standing over the remains of his parents, bloody knife still in his hand. As he was being taken away, he pointed to the box on the floor in his room and said simply, Toy. The officer was kind enough to bring it along as he was checked into a psychiatric facility. He spent years studying the inner workings and learned to repair clocks and watches. But in all those years, he never spoke a word. Sometimes he would sit for hours on his bed, turning the crank, but to no avail. Year after year went by, no one came to visit him, and he got more and more lost in his own mind. Thirty years to the day on Christmas morning, he woke to find a present on his bed. 
There was a tag with his name on it. He looked around, but he was alone. He opened the present and stared blankly at the contents. Another wooden box with a plastic crank on the side. After a few moments, Thomas took the box and began slowly turning the crank. In a few rotations, a door opened and the end of a piece of paper popped out. Thomas gently tugged until it came free. It said, I'm dying. Before I go, I wanted you to know the truth. The people I killed were not your parents. They were two people that stole you from your real family. They were planning on taking another child and disappearing, but I couldn't prove it, and the police wouldn't do anything until after it was done. By the time they would have gotten involved, your family would have been long gone and with another baby stolen from their parents. I'm sorry I couldn't get you back to your real parents. Years of searching for you had taken its toll on them and they are gone. The only thing I could do was set you free and stop them from taking another child. I hope you understand. Merry Christmas. Love. Santa. Generally vacant eyes grew narrow and focused for the first time in years. He'd been robbed of his life. The world owed him and he would make anyone pay if they tried to stop him from taking whatever he wanted. He deserved it and he meant to get it. He thought about the knife that killed his fake parents and pressed the button to call the nurse.